So those are the behaviors we're looking at, physically aggressive and non-aggressive, verbally aggressive and non-aggressive. That, but that's, that's a lot of alliteration there, I think. So where do we find it? So the, the first bullet, I think, is, uh, I hope I'm not going to be taken to task, but Anonymous, one of my favorite persons to quote, Anonymous has stated that nursing homes in, in our country, our first world medicine country, now function as long-term psychiatric hospitals for the elderly. And I think it's, it's never been truer. That's where you'll find this population to the greatest extent. I mean, here we live in a city, San Antonio, 2 million. We've got three or four geriatric psychiatry units, and each of them has 12 or 13 beds. So maybe all told we've got 60 or 70 Jerry psychiatry beds in, in this very large modern city. And of course, in nursing homes, agitation, there's that word, agitation is common. It's estimated in the literature, maybe 70 to 90 percent of demented nursing home patients at some point in their course, their stay, manifest agitation. And that 50 percent of this is, is actually aggression, you know, towards themselves, towards others, towards staff towards all of the above. And then bullet three is, you know, you have to read it a couple times, or at least I had to, that the behavioral symptoms of dementia don't always correlate with cognitive decline. So it doesn't necessarily mean that the most seriously, severely demented are the most problematic or aggressive, okay? Probably true for function, you know, being able to feed, dress, toilet, but not necessarily for behavior. In fact, behavior, we usually see the disturbances, we see peak in the middle to, to severe, middle to late stages, not at the latest. Usually the late stages, folks are becoming more immobilized by the disease, more, uh, the wrong word, but you get the picture catatonic. So, um, what about aggression? You know, it's certainly in the news. We just had uh, this horrible event this weekend, a 22-year-old young man in California who's spurned romantically and, and goes on a, a killing spree and announces a manifesto against women and, and, and his roommates. I mean, clearly he's psychotic, delusionally, you know, delusionally persecuted and and jealous, if you will, and clearly associated with tragic, dreadful aggression. So psychosis can be associated with aggression. It's not a mandate, um, but it can be associated with aggression. Uh, and I think it sort of depends on the, the nature of the psychosis. So delusion is delusions we, we must define. It's a false, firm, fixed belief, a false, firm, fixed belief. We think that when we look at Alzheimer's patients, um, you know, anywhere from a third to two-thirds uh, will present with paranoid delusions. The staff is trying to harm me. The maintenance man is trying to steal from me. So, there's, so paranoid delusions appear to be generally the most common. Hallucinations. Now, these are, are misperceptions of reality. Uh, they differ from illusions, so the, the difference is if there are trees outside my window and the wind is blowing the trees back and forth, I might say, look at those figures outside my window, and the person with me would say, no, no, those are, that's the, the, the branches blowing in the wind. So it's an actual image that I misperceive. That's an illusion. But if instead there are no trees, it's a blank landscape, and I say to my uh, colleague, look at those intruders marching up the field. There's no stimuli whatsoever, and, and I'm misperceiving it. That's a, a hallucination. In other words, a, a, a perceptual disturbance without a stimuli. So what we see in Alzheimer's dementia or demented patients uh, in a global fashion is generally the hallucinations are more visual than auditory. Distinctly different from schizophrenia, where the hallucinations are usually more auditory than visual. In fact, when you get visual hallucinations in a young, young patient, you all, almost always uh, begin an organic workup because of something physical, per se. And then last one, but, but trickiest one, to be sure, is depression is extremely common in dementia, 
but um, woefully underdiagnosed. And, and why is that? Because patients aren't able to, to describe this to us. They don't have the language or the words, if you will. Um, also, the apathy can be uh, pretty profound, such, such that it's hard to get at. So you have to kind of downshift and, and look at tearfulness, look at loss of appetite, look at loss of pleasure, um, get as much collateral history as you can because those are going to be the clues, if you will.